now we show how to install Expose 2.0. This is the installation file. We'll unpack the data. Just make sure you are connected to internet when you install. So we get online the registration and we automatically send you the, the code, uh, the activation. Here I choose the language. And then I choose the folder. The suggestion is to choose uh, to create a different folder, not to use the standard as a uh, Windows suggest because of uh, Windows firewall. So for example, here I create a new folder, expose 2.0, 27 August. Okay. Just go home, modify, go home, install. Now the installation is finished, I can run the program. So if I'm connected to the internet, I can press register now. So first my name. For example, register now, and our server will send automatically the activation. This is the code you receive from our server. Activate now, and now we are ready to use Expose. Now we can start to use Expose. First, we have a quick check to our connection setting to make sure we are in the same uh, network as the device. Yeah, the device is 100, so here yeah, everything is okay. We launch Expose. Start. Here is the first page. To search the processor, I click here, and here I can see all the connection available. Now we have only X7 connect, in fact, it shows the IP address. So I click on this here and I synchronize the device. And I can see the green bar rolling. It means now I'm connected to the device. In fact, here I can see our processor I can zoom in and zoom out. I show all the boards that are plugged into the processor. This part are the input cards, and this part are output card. As well, here's the power supply. Now we have only one power supply connected. There is also a slot for a double redundant power supply. When the processor is fully equipped with uh, more than eight boards. It's recommended to plug a second power supply. This yellow is the communication board. Now we are connected through the LAN. 
So let's start to have a look at the output cards. We count from right to left. So this is the output card number one, number two, four, three, four, five. So this number six is the HDMI 2.0 4K output card. And these are the streaming H.264 output card, which allow to have a, a streaming preview of the sources of the banks. We will see later this. And these are the input cards. We can see we have two 4K 60 Hz cards, one quad HDMI, uh, DVI, sorry, one quad SDI, and two USB cards. When I click on the output card, I can check one by one the setting by clicking this button on the bottom right of the interface and I can see the configuration. This will be HDMI 2.0, so I can choose this resolution. Can be 30, 60, 4K, 60 Hz, and I can set this port. As well, the other output after the setting, I can do a refresh on this button is uh, refreshing and resynchronized and I can see again the green line finish the sync. In this part I have an overview of all the input and output connected. As we said before we can read the 4K inputs in the slot 1 and 2 DVI, SDI, USB. The slot 2 is not mentioned, in fact, is empty. As well, the slot 4 is empty, so here is not shown. Output slot, the first and the second are rotation card. Actually, three. We can read here. RS means rotation, so one, two, and three are rotation. The first lot is a quote DVI output card, as well the five, and the slot number six is uh, HDMI 2.0 4K output, seven and eight rotation. Here I can check the configuration of the device, the network configuration. This button is for factoring reset. We can control the, the power on and power off, also with the second delay. As well, we can choose the speed control. If it's too noisy, we can decide the, the speed of the fan. And in each output card, I can set the settings for the rotation, I don't have much setting except the test pattern because the rotation mode will be configured in a second step. For the other cards, I can choose separately each card the output resolution. So for the quad DVI out, I set the standard Full HD 60 Hz. And I will have this resolution in all the outputs of this car. As well, after doing this setting, it's better to resync the device.
also for the streaming port we have to set the IP address which of course need to be in the same group of the device but with a different address this will allow to have the streaming preview Also, in the input, we can check the status of the inputs. This is the 4K card. Now we have connected HDMI 2.0. HDMI 2.0, which will be 4K. Yeah, the 4K setting, 4K to K, input type is HDMI 2.0. And again, I refresh. In the third slot, we have another 4K signal. Another HDMI 2.0, so I choose this for k acting. Input type HDMI 2.0 set. If our source, of course, is only 30 Hz, we can choose the HDMI 1.4, input type, HDMI, the same. This is very important because for the 4K card, it's the only card we really need to set the inputs. We need to choose which signal is connected. The other, the other cards are auto-detecting. Again, I refresh. In fact, now it's green. It means the device had detected the inputs. As well, all the eight USB ports in the slot number seven and eight are green. It means a device is connected. In this case, is a, a USB player now let's take a look at the area of the software called display system display system is the layout of all our display on the show We can see we have different working mode, presentation mode, preset and program mode, matrix mode, rotation mode, or edge blending. It depends on which working mode we choose. These are all the options available. Edge blending for projector, rotation for creative LED display. So let's choose now different working mode, have different color in the banner of the area. And we place all the display in our indeed display system area.
so we can set different working mode to different output cards. For example, if some destination is video projector, we will choose edge blending. Some other destination, just local monitor, we can just root in matrix mode. Or LED configuration, we can work in presentation mode. For each card, we can choose the option between HDMI 2.0 or normal. Normal is uh, the quad HDMI, quad DVI, or the H2.0 HDMI is uh, the 4K. When we select the port, we have this option to choose module or format range. Of course, if we have different modules plug in the DX7, we have to choose module and select the, the resolution will be different between HDMI 2.0 and DVI. We can select which model or customize the resolution. And now we choose, we create our display system based on which monitor layout we have on the stage on our event. We can see now, for example, we have some monitor 2K here and two monitor 4K. So we create a screen, 8K by 2K, which is made by two 4K monitor, and this other like pyramid display in a working space, 7,680 pixel by 3,840 pixel, we placed our seven monitor destination exactly in the same layout as our monitor are mounted on the wall. These are made by 2K monitor. Here we have some template Uh, here we have we can create customize based on how many destination we use to create this display we can create our customized display system in this area we can see which display are in use now and the monitor we can choose which output of X7 will compose the display that we already create before. So now this is our display configuration. One 8K 2K monitor made by two 4K output and this pyramid display made by 8 2K output. Let's do the layer management. We simply drag and drop the input into the display we made. In this case, we did a 4K 1K source indeed to create the aspect ratio. We need to choose the 4K source as working as 4K 1K. Indeed, in fact, the source represents 4K 1K upscale to all the system, which is 8K 2K. The same way we drag and drop 
the source into the other display. In this case, we put full screen. For the fine adjustment, we can set here on the right the scale parameter and the position. H.264 is used to streaming the source on our interface. The two modules are plugged in uh, the port 7 and port 8 of the output slots of the X7. We will see later. I choose another bank and again I drag and drop a different source. I put full screen of the display one. Here another source to the second display. And so I create a different bank. Here on the out key we have some shortcuts to operate with keyboard. We can copy and paste all the layers to a new bank to quick modify some layers. So we don't need to do one by one if just one layer different between the banks. With the double click, I can change the input to the layer. Or I can close and drag and drop a new one. A new bank again. Full screen at K to K. And we, are, we place three inputs to configure this layout just for example. H264, to have the streaming. Module 8 and module 7 now are the streaming card. Each module consists by four ports. Port 1 and 2 are the same, and port 3 and 4 are the same. So actually we have 1 plus backup, 2 plus backup. Each port need to have IP address, which need to be in the same group of network of the device and our computer, of course, but with a different address. So the device was 100 and this 104, 103. Each port support for streaming. So each card eight streaming. The 4K, 2K, 60 Hz count as four inputs all at once. So we can stream here the 4K, 2K inputs plus four 2K inputs. We select and we confirm by OK. Of course, we need to choose some input available, otherwise the streaming will be black. Here, the image quality with the 4K source is better to low down the quality. Now, when we switch on, we wait a few seconds and we will have the streaming of the source on the left, as well, the streaming of the layout in our bank that we create previously. This is the transition between the different banks that we create. We have the T-bar, the graphic T-bar, or we can use cut and take button 
we can choose also the fade time so I can see I choose a bank in preview take and fade out to program I choose bank one take and fade out simultaneously the 8k 2k and the other destination some button like blackout swap it's automatically indeed swap the bank from program to preview when I fade to program the previous bank selected We can see we have 16 banks available in 16 pages. So totally we have a large number of settings per set available, 256. We can load and we can save the banks that we previously formed. As well, the script is the wall configuration that we can save as a file and we can use this file to load the whole device configuration from another computer. Another important function is the display area. It means that for each bank we want to switch, we can select if switching all the display system that previously created or only one. For example, if we click only one, we will switch only the display area up one, which was the 8K 2K monitor. Or we can switch both or only the display to the pyramid display system. And this for each bank, we can select which display area to show. As well, we can rename every preset, every bank. The last page of Expose show the keyboard where we can customize some shortcuts. Here we have the global settings. We can choose the language, we can choose which device we search at the beginning, the communication settings, serial port or Ethernet. And as well, we can set some uh, role management to allow the users to access to some specific, specific function or to all the system. Thank you for listening and wish you a good use of our device.